it's time once again for the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. If you're like me, you dislike long goodbyes. You'd rather just say goodbye and then be done. I don't know if that's really a natural way to do it or if that's just something informed uh, into me through my upbringing and the society I live in. Or maybe it's just because I hate pain and it can be painful to say goodbye. Um, but because I have to assume that every single person is like me, I think that this video, I'm going to try to make it the last before someone is eliminated. Someone will be eliminated today, and it looks like, unfortunately, that someone is going to be cat as in cat. Quick reminder as to, to what that would take and where things are. Um, it's been a few days since i played, so the pieces have kind of gotten bumped around. I just kind of have to trust they're approximately where they should be. But I'm pretty positive the points are right, and that means Cat is currently nine away from the next competitor. Now, we have some players who are scoring nine a turn. Uh, Runt, I think, is the only one. Um, Cat is scoring none a turn, I think. Uh, let's see, uh, Pirate State... Step Nomads, yep, she's not scoring any points right now. Um, and she needs to. She needs to be able to pa bypass either Little Red or, I guess Little Red's the next one, and then Flush uh, before one of these markers gets to this space here, progress markers. Means if anyone trades with the Amazons, she's done. Um, if Runt gets another science card, uh, she's done. But the science cards, there, I don't think there are any more out, actually, until the the Era 3 Seven Wonders cards get shuffled into the in, into the deck. So, uh, or until everyone gets a new hand of cards. So it'll be at least a couple turns. I think we're at, yeah, we're on two. I kind of started playing already. So a while back I talked about how um, if the world had some impact on this game... You know, just through external circumstances, I was just going to work with it um, because it's a it's a big game and it's going to take me a lot of days and weeks and months to play it, and life happens around it that to, to backtrack or try to fix everything would to be to um, invite madness. Um, so to give you some context as to what's been going on in the real world, because that's important here, uh, this is the day after Black Friday, which is is what we call in the United States the day after Thanksgiving, which is um, a holiday where uh, I, I don't know how much you know about United states and traditions, but it's a holiday where a lot of people get together. And so in, in my house, we had maybe about 20 people or so. And I think our bedroom became the coat room. I was busy doing other things. So a lot of people came through here and I'm seeing that maybe either through the wind of their movement, or I don't know what else. It seems like probably wind of people just walking past incautiously um, created a stir. And it didn't take long into the turn for it to happen. There wasn't a lot of production this turn, so I think only only our Babylonians produced, um, by our, I mean Melky's Babylonians produced, uh, Heading us right into the trade and progress phase. Second trade, Saxons with the Amazons. That is going to give Runt, get Runt into the Dark Age at least. Also gives her paved roads um, on the bright side. Any Anyone who passes this space, this, these paved roads are here for the rest of the game. Anyone who, who passes that space is going to have paved roads for the rest of the game. Everyone that is except cat as in cat. I know I like to talk a lot about how her doom is impending, but it's very well impending right now. There, It is possible that after this trade, I guess if it depends on how the trade goes down, maybe I should do that first, but if the trade only goes to one space, if she only moves one space, if someone does something that makes Runt deprogress um, during, during this turn, before the end of the turn, then a uh, cow will have uh, another lease on life, but that, you know, there's a lot of ifs here. So I guess I should just play out the trade and go from there. And Runt won the trade, so she got to move two. It's going to be really unlikely that so that she moves down uh, uh, two progress levels. That would mean that two different people would have to play 
um, or not two different people, but two different events that, that subtract from her progress that have to be played on her, which I guess is possible. We have some civilized actions out there, and the Amazons don't have any wreaths, so they are very vulnerable to, um, to uh, uh, god godly attacks or supernatural attacks or natural attacks, so... You know, it's possible. And in fact, I would say that's that's Run's big weakness. Run is dominating this board right now. But if people want to start throwing disasters on her, uh, they can. And that's going to take her down. I wouldn't be surprised if that didn't happen soon. Although I don't know if it will this turn. We've had our first success on the Royal Tournament. It was Spartacus. Um, the, to, to participate, since I haven't really done this yet, I, I think I should re-explain what it is. To participate, so we have two different kind of dual of ages things the leaders can do. The labyrinth, which is what more people have been doing, they can do that by going to these trees. Or, um, the other thing, and in, in the ancient age, which is what we're in right now, a dual of ages, uh, it's the, the royal festival. And so the royal festival, you have these different uh, competitions that you can go into and if you if you win you get your marker there and if you lose you don't um, how you do those though is you have to be in someone else's capital so Spartacus has gone to Kaz and Cat's pirate capital right there and he competed very easily actually he amazed it uh, in the skirmish the royal festival skirmish he's a very good at skirmishing um, this coin is in the way but if you see there that's white that's the best you can be in skirmishing. Interesting round of card play during Cowboy Civilized Action. So first he tried to play a, a volcano uh, which would have blown up one of um, Runt's mountain areas in order to set him back one. It seems like he doesn't want he doesn't want Cat as in Cat to be out just yet. Uh, one reason that might be is because he is going to be the last person to have a turn next turn. And if she's gone, the rest of the players get to be vultures with her counters. So they, they you know, those who have not yet, who don't have three empires yet, are going to be able to start a third. Cowboy is going to be the least likely to have that. So the longer she's around, um, the better it is for him. It would have been nice for him if she had been removed last turn, but not so much this turn. But he kind of likes her too. He feels bad for her. Um, so he was trying to set Runt back. Little Red stopped it with a bad augury. He used a, that's a, like a cancel, a canceling event. He used his own bad augury on Little Red's bad augury. I don't know how much of this is legal or what. Um, but then Runt played a card that let her take a card from the discard, a bad augury, and she used that bad augury on, because you could play, yeah, you could play it any time, use that bad augury on Cowboy's bad augury, which allowed Little Red's bad augury to go forth and cancel the volcano. So there's a lot of card play. Um, the upshot is people have less cards and nothing else happened. A minor plague almost ripped through the entirety of India, uh, sponsored by Runt's Pharaonic Egyptians. They had just enough piety to get past the lack of piety that the Harappans have. Even though the Harappans are Hindus, they don't um, really pay much tribute to their god or their culture. And so they are vulnerable to spiritual maladies. Um, the disease started in Pallava and then worked its way through Maharashtra almost hit Sindh. If it had done that, that would have been really bad because that's the capital. Um, not only would uh, giraffes, harappans have lost their capital, they would have lost their elephant. They have an elephant at their bank. If they produce, they can produce this elephant if they want. And then if the disease had continued over to here, they would have also lost this boat because this boat would have had nowhere to go to restock. Um, it has to be adjacent to um, a friendly, some friendly territory. So we're seeing how, despite how mighty an empire can be, if you, if you neglect your, your spiritual side, if you neglect the arts, you can be in big trouble. And va va boom, the luscious Cleopatra is now on the map, um, just invoked by the Pharaonic Egyptians who get her for free whenever they civilize in era two. Um, which is where they are. There's so there they are. Um, I decided that I'd make Cleopatra Ghana the mimic. There are only two women left in our ancients deck. Um, one is Baudica, the Hand of Vengeance, and the other one is 
um, Ghana the Mimic, who just mimics whoever she's around. And that's probably a good way to get ahead in politics. So, um, though it doesn't always work, it doesn't always work to be like what he said. Sometimes you lose the election that way. Um, but this is not an election. This is, and, and Cleopatra is also a, a capable administrator, so that counts for something too. Uh, has a lot going for her. administration skills. She's able to mimic things. Um, she does three damage instead of two, though the penetration is bad. But she's very intelligent also. That's, that, that helps. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. We lift up our hearts. We shall lift up our hearts to the Lord. That's right, we have our very first Christian empire, the Syracusans. That's the, that's the glare of God there. Um, they, Christianity began, it turns out, in this, this part of the world instead of other parts of the world. Um, Christianity is pretty interesting in this game. For one, it, it disorders your, uh, your capital, which is buried underneath. It's Sicily here, buried under all of this. So I guess Christianity began in Sicily. Um, and then every turn you can just, uh, you can um, convert an adjacent neutral region. So it's a nice way to spread out is via Christianity. Um, and then the flip side of that is every time you lose a fertile area, you get some more disorder. And this disorder is, is not that hard to get put away but it, or to, to, to deal with, but it's, it's another thing you got to deal with. Um, but a fun thing to get, the Irish need to get a hold of that stuff, that, that Christian magic, that's going to really help them get points. Um, if they can have the most lands of any Christian, Christian nation, which I guess that's going to put, it's going to make this interesting little triangle going on here. So the, the Irish are going to be competing with the Syracusans and also with um, the Saxons here, so... They're going to have this kind of... And then in the middle is this vast Roman Empire and all this other stuff going on. I'm, I'm enjoying that. And here's Kaz's hand when it's the pirate civilization action, civilized action. She's going to practice her interpretation of grace and not do anything this turn. She could take some shots at people with some assassinations or things like that, but she feels like it's kind of a foregone conclusion. She's the final civilized action of the turn, so all that remains is discard empire, which she's the only one who is going to discard. So she'll have the final action on her final turn of the game, and that action will be to discard the steppe nomads. And along with them, everything else that she owns uh, will be discarded. Occupation, marketing research. Secret fantasy to see every country on every continent. Abandon a Citroen. That's, I don't know if I pronounced it right, but I do know it's an automobile. Someone told me that. In Frankfurt, main airport due to terrorist threat. Pet peeve, cigarettes. Though I, well, no, I won't talk about that. Uh, I'd like to meet Linda Ellerby. Linda Ellerby. Personal motto, let it happen. She's most proud of her two children. Reputation in high school, voted most naive, three words that describe her, outgoing, stubborn, outspoken, childhood nickname, cat, like in cat. In this tournament I've, I've used and disposed of many, many real people. Um, it's it's a lot of a lot of introductions. It's kind of a, a lot of the tournaments been like being at a party and just like you know, having a game with this this group, but then moving on in this group. This group that I'm playing with right now, I've been playing with the same group for maybe six months. Uh, I'm really bad with time. Since July, July, October, August, September, October, November. So five months, five months now. And Kat, I've actually played with even longer. She was in the very first Real People game. Um, it's not only a length of time of play, but uh, a number of different games. So, and Kat, Kat is, is kind of special in a couple ways. One, because she played Shogun, so I've been with her for so long. She was part of the Pop Origins deal, and then part of this game as well. 
Um, but also Kat has actually kind of melded in my mind with a real human who I interact with online, Wolf Corbett, through um, a Battle Stations game that I think is kind of defunct, sadly, just through lack of interest uh, that it's doing online. It's just, uh, I, I won't go into that. But, um, and she was also the emissary to Wolf Corbett's people in the Pablo Origins game. And so I, I kind of tried to swirl in some of what I think he would be like to play with uh, in with her own behavior. I didn't, you know, do a lot of that for the camera, but just in my own mind, I'm just talking to you about uh, the existence of these, these characters, I guess, in my own mind. And how, um, you know, normally if, if you read a novel, it says any, any resemblance to any person living or dead is purely coincidental. In this case, it resembles someone who is living. Um, but also it was very directly taken from another person. Um, the, the words on the back here, I don't know if these would apply to Wolf Corbett, but, so it's definitely a melding of the two. Uh, it's gonna be it's time to see her go, and, and you know, this is this seven ages, it's gonna be like a long receding of all the, the personalities that I've uh, gotten, gotten used to, to playing with uh, since since the Pop Origins game. Goodbye. All right, Kat. Here's what the world looks like without you. Um, not a huge change on the map. Five spaces vacated that once held blue. Um, see here, Spain is now free. Spartacus is there by himself. Very cool, Spartacus. And a couple of areas there, Muscovy and the Pippet Marches got vacated. More table space for players. I don't know if um, Flush is going to spread out. He tried to. I told him to wait. Uh, pushed him back. <laughs> Actually started extending the cards down. Pushed him back. Um, I might bring one of these guys over. I don't know. It's kind of a tricky thing because, you know, if I bring one of these guys over, these guys are going to be more crowded than these guys. I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to do it. Um, maybe I'll use this this push flush down and just use this area for organizing. It always helps to have uh, some sort of vacant space to work with. Um, yes, yeah, so that's how the things look. Glory track, you know, Runt is still killing it. Uh, Giraffe is still doing awesome. Melky's still just pulling in four, which is more than flush. Flush is only pulling in three. He. Um, What's interesting is going to be the new dynamic now. I mean, there's going to be a new competition for the bottom, and it's going to be these three. Uh, Cowboy was scoring pretty well, but his scoring potential with the Phoenicians have gone way down. He's not able to keep up the 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 water dominance now that you know we have quite a few more naval powers um, that are not adjacent to him. There's not a lot he can do to them. Um, well, actually, there is. He's got he's got a lot of wreaths, so he might stay with it. I mean, that's that's where this particular um, way of playing makes it a little more difficult because you have this cultural investment in an empire. It's not you can't just like lose them and then bring back someone else and get all of those cards back. You have to build the culture back up slowly, um, and so that's 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 hard in a case like this when the Phoenicians are as an empire are going to be you know increasingly. Um, increasingly fall behind, whereas culturally they still have this very rich culture that, that can bring a lot to Cowboy. That's tough. He's still scoring well off the Plains Americans. That too could change though. If anyone else goes into America, I mean, they're going to be at a disadvantage. Um, they're not the, the toughest guys there. Uh, what else is going on? That's um, The vacation of Kaz going to Going to make an interesting clash between Flush and um, Flush and Giraffe. Giraffe definitely has more incentive to go into Spain than Flush. I mean, the Syracusans, I guess it could help their navy to have more land. Syracusans are like the Phoenicians. They're not so useful anymore. Um, yeah, they're, they're really, really in a tough place. He might have to get rid of them as well. Uh, so we're going to see some changes now that we've seen this vacation. Um going to be a great turn to be Little Red. He's going to start off the next turn and have the first shot at one of those plump, plump, blue, juicy counter sets uh, like, like big fat blueberries and 
late autumn and somewhere where blueberries come out in late autumn. Next time on the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament, we're still in the Pope leg, seven by seven ages. The first fly has fallen.